they are by far and away the heavy favorites in this game. Yeah, they certainly are. And when we talk about Yang's champion pool, we generally talk about the Nah, about the Echo. They are a little bit more lane focused. Mouse, of course, loves seeing like the Shen, like the Gangplank to be able to get into that bottom lane and help out Depth and Mako swinging that 2v2. Take a look at the band so far. Jungle Pool has been hit extremely heavily. No real surprise when Clear Lab is considered to be one of, or if not the best jungler in the 2016 World Championship. Elise, Nidalee, Rek'Sai, and obviously the Jace. Uh, where do we go next? I think that the interesting thing here for Clear Love is he doesn't play the standard champion picks. I mean, he does play Elise historically, but the Nidalee's never really been in his champion pool. He will prefer things like the Kha'Zix, like the Evelyn coming into this tournament. And I think that's what's super interesting to me about EDG's bands right here. I think the three most popular junglers that we're going to see at this tournament are already gone. And then it really pushes you towards your secondary preference. I mean, Graves would be the natural slot in for Revolta. I think if it's not first picked, it might actually be picked in the first rotation when EDG gets a choice on the red side. Revolta has also historically played a very mean Lee Sin domestically. We'll see whether he does fall back to an old comfort pick uh, in regards to the pick ban phase. And of course, that will allow him to dual clear love if they are looking to target the jungler of INTZ. Right, we've seen uh, jungle first pick in all three of the previous games. We somewhat anticipate Yang to do Maybe potentially the same for Revolta, but what if other champions are available in the pool? It feels like absolutely everything uh, as far as comfort picks and preferences for both teams. Yeah, there is a lot of choice left here, and it really just depends on where you want to try and make your advantages. Nar was a dominant pick on the 6.15 patch. He has been very slightly nerfed for the 6.18 patch, which we're playing Worlds on right now. And they just keep swapping between these solo laners. There's really no way to predict what they're doing coming into this one because they've had so much off time. Yeah, and the CB low more than many other regions. Of course, they had to stop their regular season before uh, the Olympic Games over there in Brazil. So we did see them for IWCQ very briefly. Of course, that's a very quick tournament coming into this one. And Toka's champion pool was something that was heavily questioned because he was playing a lot of the Swain during the regular split. However, he did adapt well. And I think they're just trying to secure him solid lanes. We saw G2 try and do this against CLG in our first match of the day when they picked the Syndra and the Jace both blind into CLG. Syndra doesn't have too many negative matchups, so I can't fault them for this pick, but it does give EDG complete choice of what they want to play. And if they pick Ezreal, that's going to be spectacular for Deft. One of the world's best AD carries. I think Free called him the best AD carry in the world earlier. Playing a champion that we were expecting to see a whole lot of throughout the course of the World Championship and another Nami. Yeah, and I think that's the interesting thing. Teams are very willing to blind pick this Nami at the moment, and we hadn't seen very much of it internationally at all. However, they like the sustain in the lane phase and they do like the pick potential that it does bring. Very squishy between levels three and about seven. Uh, so see how it works out. I also think the Nami will have some effect against teams that are a little bit more poke heavy with Jace coming back into the meta and things like Rumble that you want to disengage from being able to sustain instead of going back to base is very valuable. Not to mention the Ezreal nominee lane is going to be dominant against most matchups, and it's also where Deft and Mako have made a ton of strides domestically in the LPL, is in the 2v2 lane, so locking down that early is playing to their strengths right off the bat. Certainly one of the more, I guess, dominant 2v2 lanes in the LPL, and Deft is still an Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal. So you have to watch for that. He hasn't picked up the Trinity Force, still goes very heavily towards the defensive poke heavy route. And I think that that will be something that, you know, can keep this bottom lane at bay. Well, you have to assume jungler and potentially top lane here, or maybe mid lane for EG. We'll save that counter pick for Mouse, seeing as though Yang has already locked in uh, that Syndra. Where are we anticipating these next two picks? Yeah, so, so far INTZ has gotten a heavy amount of pick so far. I feel like if EDG wants to get the most value, they would actually pick Pawn's mid laner right here and also their jungler and then probably wait for the last pick as far as their top laner would be concerned. But they do have all the options and it looks like Vladimir mid and most likely the Graves. We were expecting to see the Graves actually a fair bit earlier. We'll see if they end up locking it in. A few seconds. It is locked in. So no real surprise. What is that left for Revolta? He hovered Sejuani. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a believer. The Olaf, the Zac. I mean, once again, we might see Elise Sin come out of Revolta. He has been known to play it. Graves is a very big team fighting uh, jungler for Clear Love. I mean, the LPL breaks into team fights a lot sooner than most regions. So seeing him pick up something, you know, they've already got the Vladimir and Ezreal. That is a team composition that they can just put a pure tank in the top lane. Mouse does still play things like the Maokai. 
and uh, will be interesting to see if this is a pure 5v5 team fight comp coming out of EDG. Yeah, and I'm looking at INTZ's choices here. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that Revolta is confident in his, in his ability to counterpick the Graves jungle because I feel like he is the fourth best jungler uh, here with the three junglers already being banned, so I would have put a higher priority on it. Is he going to be playing Evelyn against Clearlove? Or he's just going to go back to some comfort pick Lee Sin. That makes a little bit more sense. All right, definitely going to play a little bit into the hands of that pick style as well. Decent front line, decent options. Lee Sin not rounds out the INTZ team composition. Yeah, it certainly does, and I like the pick here because if you're able to get priority for Yang, set up a 4-1 split and control vision here if you are INTZ, it will be easy to pick on the squishy support that Mako has locked in as the LPL teams go for these deep vision that they don't necessarily set up correctly for. Um, want to see whether INTZ have the control to be able to set this up. They're going to need a lot of control to do so, but I also feel like EDG is getting pretty much everything they'd want in this draft phase. They very early were able to dominate a good bottom lane. They've been able to counterpick both of these lanes. If they pick the Aurelia into the Gnar, it's going to be kind of a two for one. They're undefeated on Aurelia during the regular season, even though Mouse isn't considered a carry, and it's a favorable matchup into the Gnar. Yeah, and whilst Mouse isn't considered a carry in the LPL, when he was on ADG, of course, another sister team of EDG, this was his go-to pick along with Fizz. So so, uh, something he's very comfortable on and historically has been very good into the top lane matchup of Gnar. There we go. Locked in is not going to be the declared much to the crowd's disappointment, I am afraid. Going to have to wait a little longer for that one. I still think we'll see it. I, I feel the same. Uh, in terms of the two team compositions, though, kind of options and tools on both sides, but I'm a little nervous about this Ezreal Nami lane and the things that it can do to Ash Brom during the early stages of the game. Yeah, expect to see a lot of attention bottom lane from EDG as is customary in their games, but they're also fairly immune to ganks if they do want to push up very hard. The ability to disengage with the Ezreal and the Nami is incredibly high, not to mention they should have a little bit of power in the top lane after Aurelia is level four or so on Narc, because that's when the matchup starts going in her favor. Even though INTZ has a lot of pick potential, I really favor EDG's team composition here. Yeah, certainly do. One thing that you do have to look at, however, is there's no CC coming out of the jungle, and that is where EDG has been domestically so good. I, 22 games between Gragas and Rek'Sai for clear love this split puts him very hard in the control jungle focus. Well, luckily for them, they've got a former world champion in Pawn sitting on their uh, mid lane, as well as top lane undefeated Mouse Irelia. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen the team compositions. Jump onto Twitter, fire off your predictions, and let us know who you think is going to win. Hashtag ITZ win if you think CBLOL in Brazil can do it, or hashtag EDG win if one of the pre-tournament favorites and number one seed from the LPL will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in game four of the 2016 World Championship. And believe me, quick shot. this does not feel like game four for EDG and INTZ. This is their first game on the international stage for them in this group. The seventh and eighth teams we've seen today and so many first impressions will be made off of this game. And this has to be a statement game for the LPL, going up against a wildcard team in INTZ, one of the better wildcard teams. However, with past disappointments, the LPL has to hit hard. Yeah, you talked about that, and LPL's best jungler, Clear Love, and Revolta are going to be the focus of our alternate stream. Go check that one out on Riot Games 2. And, you know, we've heard from Revolta in both the pregame video as well as... Um, Legends Rising talking about going up against the squad. And for INTZ, they've got to show up. Now, early trade, they're going to follow this one. Support all combat, and Macau turns his attention to Mako. I'm not going to enjoy that later in the game. Mako's going to be able to get away. Got a ton of biscuits, got a heal, and just an early trade. Yeah, I think EDG actually comes out slightly ahead on that one. Love them flares. The flare coordination is... Strong in these ones, but as you can see, they only lose a little bit of mana on Mako, but meanwhile, Macau and Jockster would have to use health potions if they want to start lane with full health. And this is one thing that EDG has done very well historically. They do not like trading camps. They want you in lane level one, protract that level one period for as long as possible, especially with something like the Ezreal that has so much lane priority at this stage of the game. And I also think for INTZ that they couldn't actually have gotten much more unlucky as far as who they have to start this tournament with. We already saw Albus Knox Luna up against the Rocks Tigers earlier on today, and even though they actually had a spectacular start, they were swiftly dispatched later in that game. And it's technically the same matchup here. You have the number one seed from a major region in the LPL 
and now you have the CB Law trying to go up against them in their very first game. And Elvis Knox, Luna, and INTZ look very similar in the wildcard tournament. Yeah, they certainly did. I mean, INTZ did win the head-to-head -head in that tournament, so you have to say slight favorites there. However, the punishment continues in this bottom lane. Oof. To be expected, though, um, big wave shoving in. We'll see how Mikhail and Juxta farm up under the tower. And talking about those expectations, INTZ, are they going to show up better than they did at IWCQ or uh, leading into the world qualifiers? And Playmate, oh, big damage on Mikhail. Yeah, and they don't have much time to find their footing because immediately Deft and Mako are already putting as much pressure as possible on this bottom side. And the only way you would be able to stop this is if Revolta had done a very modified path to rush level three and then go for that gank. But he's not there, and Clear Love is actually going to get river control. So Macau and Jockster are completely on their own. To Revolta's credit, he did start Gromp and go straight into a red buff. I think he was looking for the bottom lane gank. However, when you lose a lane that hard and the I minion wave hit. is so huge, you just can't go down there. And Clear Love also started on a main camp and changed his jungle pathing to match it. So both junglers, very good start to the game. We also do have to point out, though, Yang versus Mouse. The early matchup in that is slightly favorable for Nar when he's in mini at the start of the game, and then it swings back to Mouse around level three or four. He had stacked up a giant wave, and now Mouse is clearing it up at the turret, but if there could have been jungle pressure there, it would have been an opportunity. There's going to be jungle pressure in the mid lane as Tokas gets jumped on. Klealev comes in. Very nice good scatter the week, and Tokas gets rid of Klealev. Not even a summoner spell blown. Yeah, it was a good scout of the week, but I actually think it was a better Q by Clear Love. A lot of times you'd expect the immediate detonate to try and go off the wall, but he actually angles it to the left and got the return on Talkers. Feels like a little bit of tension here. Revolta spots Clear Love running into his jungle, decides not to engage. No summon is blown, and Talkers just under pressure from Pawn. Pawn goes in, Tides of Blood, looking for more damage. I was anticipating a dive, but it's way too early, way too aggressive. Pawn's too good of a player to go for that one. And this is something we expect out of the CB LOL teams. They're not trading aggressively. As we said, they are a slower paced team. They're showing a lot of respect. You could see that Revolta didn't want to go over the wall and challenge Clear Love. Tokas just sees laden control over to the Vladimir in this situation. Instead, they're looking for a play top lane. And this is what we expect, you know, nice and slow, get behind Yang. See if they can get ahead. Megan Nars about to pop. Now still has Flash available and Clear Love's nearby, so this could get yeah. risky. The wave is in a decent place for this if they are trying to bait Mouse in. Look at this, the stop comes down, a lot of forward. Mouse has taken a lot of damage, down to 300 hit points, but Clear Love shows his face, Revolta and Yang, they decide to peace out. End of the line, not gonna get bounced against the wall and still no kill. Look at the damage on the bot lane. Macau and Jockster, they're under threat. They're in trouble. That's a dash oh forward. Jockster may not want this. Exhaust goes out. Down to 50. Summon a heal. Flash away. Exhaust under the tower. First blood to death. He gets out of tower range. And Jockster Ooh. flashes from tower. Eat the chair. Trades two for one. And exactly what you expect out of the LPL team. EDG go aggressive. They win the 2v2. Pick up the two for one trade. And Death and Mako just look very crisp. And it's massive that they're able to kill both of them because then they're also able to get the wave a little bit into the tower. And Death gets to soak up all that experience. It's going to give him a very favorable buy time. And let's have a look at it again. INTZ actually stepped forward into this trade. They think it's going to be okay here with Jockster. And I think they decided to go aggressive because they were worried about being out sustained, but they just completely misjudged the damage right here. Deft is so deftly able to go outside <laughs> the minion wave and get his Qs through it to be able to hit Macau with all of his harass. So really just well played by Deft and Mako. Going in for that final kill is actually worth it because it denies enough of the experience and still gives the assist gold over to Deft. So just well done across the board. 30 CS to 40 in that bottom lane. Mikhail and Jockster, no summoners. Although it is equaled by Deft and Mako, and Mako as well as the TM machine. So gonna go for that ice ball in the old school blue build that um, you were talking about during picks and bands spawn. Yeah, it certainly is. You can see that's a dream verse buy here because you're able to get all of the flat mana out of the tier. <laughs> As the INTZ and CB Law region showing how much they really do love this squad. To be fair, to be fair, I'm not uh, fully aware China is on the Twitter train, so that could be why the vote is. You get out of here with that logic, Twitch China. <laughs> <laughs> but it is amazing how much support and honestly pressure INTZ are going to be under because they're not really the most favored team when you look at the CB Law region, and they've got a lot of fans that they have to live up to because Brazil, they won a game two years ago, they won two games last year. That means the pressure's on to get three this year. Exactly. The last thing you want to do is regress, but they've been placed into a pretty difficult group, and this is the most difficult team in the group. They have to play right off the bat. Well, look at this. Macau going trading in at 1v2. 
decent amount of damage to death, but the sustain will be up. Revolta here. He's Look got for those Saunders. Oh, he's so low. Oh, this get is going to be trouble. Death, that's a flashboard from Revolta. Death is down. Mako gets taken out by the resonating strike. INTZ get to. For all the praise we heaped on to Deft and Mako before, we have to give it right back to Macau and Jockster because they're the ones that set up that gank and Revolta just came to reap the rewards because they pushed them so deep into the turret that they got Def one hit away as Revolta was just able to walk in there. So very well done by Macau and Jockster. Well, the second time today, a team who's qualified from the wild card qualifier shows up in the opening 10 minutes. Going toe to toe with some of the best players in the world. Let's see what Yang can do. Pressure's on him to show up. Meganar's gonna be able to pop shortly down the bottom lane. Clear Love's not gonna be able to defend the tower. He gets He's jumped up. Revolters one hop forward. Clear Love's gone down. Horn has arrived for the fight though. They've traded one for one. Horns are gonna clear up. That's a second. Death gets the kill in the back end. Horn shuts down Mikau. Meganar's up for Nar. Yang throws Mouse against the Here wall. Mouse eats the ice ball. Here comes Tokas, gets the kill. Trading back and forth, it's a two for three at the end of the day. And INTZ cross map completely outplay EDG. It's a three for three trade, but they get the first blood turret. Then top lane, Tokas comes in and saves Yang. This is a very good start to game one. Yeah, so much for a slow place game right there. A 1,000 gold advantage for INTZ, who plays extremely well when they have a lead in these games. This is an interesting one, though. Clear Love only dies 1.5 times a game, so when he dies, it better be worth it. It was a bit of a bait as INTZ were going for this turret. So Clear Love was doing his best to clear the minions. Pawn was on the way the entire time. So I think EDG gets the better of this one, even though they lose the turret. It's just when it comes back to the top lane, as Mouse is trying to get an advantage onto Yang as he's both at level 7. But Jockster, Talkers has roamed up there on the Syndra. He countered the roam, so to speak, of the Vladimir going bottom lane. He wasn't just meandering in the mid lane, he made something happen, and INTZ win out the overall trade. And not only is it an assist for Yang, but he's currently 16 CS up over the Aurelia. We said this can be a good matchup for the Aurelia. However, they have been punishing it quite heavily. Yeah, we actually have some stats to track this. In the 27 times Nara has played against the Aurelia, the average CSD at 10 is plus 5.3 for the Aurelia. So by being plus 20, Yang is doing great. And Horn is a little bit of trouble. Unleashed power comes down. Dragon's Rage kick actually sends Pawn to safety. Revolta and Tok is not able to get that DPS quite as heavily. And looking at some of the other leads, Revolta down 12 to Clear Love, plus 11 or so for Tokas in the mid lane, and obviously the ADC advantage to Def. So mix and match across the board. Whichever team can use their strengths better in the next few minutes, obviously set themselves up well in the mid game. But lanes are being rescued here for EDG. Clear Love shows mid lane, pushes that one out for Pawn. He's going to be able to get a recall here. Bottom lane is very far overextended, and the Nard does have teleport right now, so you have to look for that play in the bottom lane. However, Revolta might want something top. Yeah, they have to be clean on this gank. Yang, we need to get this done first. Can he get it? Oh, he oh the knock comes out. Mouse is able to hop to a minion. Here comes Yang. Yang's got turret aggro. Crunches and wallops forward. Tower aggro goes down. They end up trading one for one, and Revolt is putting damage on the tower. Because of the assist gold, INTZ will get more in that trade, but the question will be about the loss in map pressure. Since Clear Love is back in base, I think that's still okay, despite how well Mouse played the game. Not only the map pressure, however, now the CS discrepancy is 32 at 10 minutes into this game. Yang is completely punishing Mouse at this stage. And you have to step back. Revolta, 2-1-2. Two, and two. He hasn't played Lee Sin since the International Wildcard Invitational before MSI. It was a win against the Saigon Jokers. And Revolta's showing up. Multiple ganks, multiple lanes, and he's making his presence felt against EDG. INTZ have got a two and a half thousand gold lead. Which is actually a little bit insane when you think about what was happening in the other game between ANX and Rocks Tigers. EDG have to be able to pull themselves back from this. Spawn, you mentioned earlier the branding of their league was victory or nothing. They're the undefeated team from the LPL. If they came in and lost the first game of Worlds to a pool three seed, that would be disaster for their mentality. Yeah, it certainly would. And you have to think about how easy these comps are to execute in the late game. Pick versus heavy team fight and control. It is so much easier for INTZ went ahead to be able to set up the map correctly. So you feel that if EDG aren't able to get some turrets down, this game could quickly get out of hand. Well, that's exactly what INTZ wants to do. The Rift Herald is going to help out Yang, putting a lot of damage down onto the eye. Looking at the minimap, there's no vision and no threat of any sort of contest here from EDG. And if there yeah. was ever a signal that Yang leading with the uh, eye of uh, the void, this is going to be it.
I'm a little bit surprised he actually rushed the Black Cleaver instead of the Frozen Mallet, especially against the Aurelia, since the lane is fairly long, he'd be able to chase him down. But getting the Rift Herald is just going to continue his dominance in that lane. Taking a look at some of the items. Uh, some breakpoints here for Pawn and for Deft. Deft on your screen, Iceborn completed that Frozen Fist. Pawn's going to start working towards some uh, AP. Got that Spirit Visage completed. Tower number two will fall now in favor of EDG. Sorry, tower number one, as it's INTZ that have got themselves two towers. A slight slowdown in the pace for Volta is going to steal this red buff. Look at all the vision around it. Yeah, they're kind of trading map pressure right now, and EDG is trying to make something happen on the bottom side. I wouldn't be too surprised if EDG just faint back and take the Drake, as far as the Mountain Drake is concerned, but Mouse has to be very careful here. I don't even know if he could defend this turret. Revolta just walks up to it. Yeah, it's what they give up in response, and so many times EDG has done this in the LPL, where they just give over top side of the map, and Yang wants Mouse. Oh, he oh, got him! got to find him! The stun! The wall! The pin! Mouse gets knocked backwards! Revolta plays pinball and gets the hat trick in the game! We said if there was a place to attack EDG, it would definitely be in the top lane against Mouse. 38 CS and three deaths later, it's happening. Well, Tokas is going to eat a Hemo Plague. Jockster Macau come up. Looking at the minimap, support is coming in for EDG, and Jat coming into the tournament. Mouse had one of the lowest CSDs of all top laners, and you just hit it again. Mouse is falling further and further behind. That early advantage that Gnar had in the lane setup is pulling further ahead. Exactly, and Spawn got to cast so many of Yang and Revolta's games in IWC, and they were really good as far as a duo is concerned. This was just a great kill. Yeah, it certainly was, and I guess Revolta even gets to put a little bit of the style on here. Kicks him back into the car. Fall, follows up, easy kill there. Uh, but this is just a, I hate to say it, worrying trend right now for EDG because <laughs> top lane is an area we thought would be attacked against this team. However, their bottom lane has not been as dominant as we would have expected going into the game because even though Yang and Revolters are the superstars of the INTZ lineup, you have to say that Macau and Jockster, even at IWCQ, was a part of the map that was attacked. Yeah, and you kind of almost have to suspend your belief here and wait for the other shoe to drop because you don't expect INTZ to actually beat EDG. But the longer this happens, the more the possibility becomes real. We're 14 minutes into the game here, and they have a 3,000 gold advantage over EDG. If you track their gold advantages throughout all of their games in Brazil as well as the wildcard qualifier, they are 20 wins and one loss with a 1,000 gold or more lead at 20 minutes. So obviously the level of competition is different here, but it's actually becoming a real possibility that they take this game. Up on. Oh, get timing! Oh, so good from Mikau. Glacial Fisher, however, is just a tad to the wrong angle. Well, you need damage on Ash if you're going to be able to kill Pons Vladimir, who's got a pretty tanky build so far. Yeah, certainly has him. Maybe just a slight miscalculation there from Jockster was looking for the follow up. However, the impressive thing for me out of INTZ is we're used to seeing wildcard teams explode with kills in the early game but they've transitioned all of them into three turrets, and that's where the majority of their gold lead is lying right now, as well as that Rift Herald. But coming into the tournament, the expectation was that the CB LOL as a region were becoming more and more strategic. Low kills per minute. You touched on that uh, in our pregame spawn, and INTZ, somewhat famous in CB LOL for playing the map, playing the macro. Yang and Revolta, they're looking to double-team Mouse. This time around, the stun, the kick. Mouse may as well play pinball. He's going to go down. Oh! The boulder toss! Finishes it off! And he is getting no help, and EDG isn't able to make plays happen anywhere else on the map. They did pick a high CC composition. They did pull ahead in the laning phase, so they're actually running out of options. Oh, Mako's in trouble! Tokas unleashes the damage for INTZ's ninth kill. And EDG across the map is just falling apart, and I do think it is that point on the CC. Normally, this is Clear Love's part of the game where he'll be setting up ganks on something like the Rek'Sai like the Gragas, but on this Gregs, he's just been hard farming, and even though he's got a slight CS advantage, that's not enough against a 3-1 and 3 Lee Sin. Is this where you start to believe? Is this where you look at yes. INTZ? 5,000 gold and exceptional double team plays, just like this one. And I think that's what it is, the execution. They're able to revisit a lane. They set up the gank one more time beautifully. They even get the flash out of now so without good. having to burn anything themselves. Uh, this is really an impressive camp set up by INTZ at the perfect side of the map.
Exactly, and I do also have to talk about talkers. People were thinking he was going to be an incredibly weak mid laner coming in here, and maybe this is EDG playing around with their lineup a little bit too much. They were undefeated with Scout in the mid lane, and Pawn is coming off of injury. Many people were wondering if they were trying to hide Scout, try Pawn out. But if this game is an indication, yes, he has picked up the two kills. He has not had map pressure up against talkers in this game. I love the first pick Cinder that they've been able to get for him. It's had priority. And EDG do not look very coordinated through the first 17 minutes. One thing on the pawn point that you do have to point out, I guess, is the fact that he's played 40 games of solo queue. So the injury is not an issue right now. And they played him five times during the regular season yep. where they only lost one game. So EDG is definitely practicing this lineup, not willing to give them the excuse. Right now, they're just being outplayed. Yeah, no doubts about it. Can INTZ keep it up? Because uh, yep. we've, we've seen these Question. guys, we've seen, uh, you know, Teams of this caliber fall apart in the mid to late game. It's closing games that matters. But with a 4,000 gold lead, with three towers to one, with map control and very good vision, INTZ have got the recipe for success. Yang, gonna take down this tower shortly. I don't think Pawn can defend it. One or two more autos. And there we go, Pawn's forced to back away. This is gonna be the fifth turret for INTZ. Their gold lead is only getting bigger and bigger. Deft is gonna have to do some wizard work in this game. Iceborne Gauntlet Ezreal's can carry it. And we were thinking, everyone we talked to say, hey, if you give Deft Ezreal, it's, it's over. It's a free win for EDG. But even if he wins the lane early, even if they pick up two kills in the 2v2, it doesn't seem like it's necessarily that much. 6,000 gold spawn, 18 minutes in. This is absolutely massive, and the game is going to have to be very protracted at this point. I mean, Lee Sin technically does fall off in regards to damage. Mm -hmm. But so does Aurelia, the later the game goes, not really going to be able to get any assassinations. And when you have the control in the team fight, the Braum, the Syndra, it is just so hard to continue this follow-up damage. INTZ right now are just set up for so much success. We're approaching 20 minutes into the game, and the jaws are on the floor here in the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco. I cannot believe that we are witnessing a Brazilian squad with a 6,000 gold lead against the LPL's number one seed. Let that sink in for a second. Now the pressure is on. Infernal Drake is up. Vision control in favor of INTZ. And they're going to start this one off uncontested. And you just have to let it go. I mean, right yep. now, if you are EDG, you are playing for 35 to 40 minutes plus in this game to be able Ooh. to catch up. That was close. That was very close to a steal from death, but I agree with you, Spawn. At this point, EDG has to do complete damage control. They're probably going to end up losing their sixth turret of the game and have to turtle completely around their inhibitor turrets. The problem with this is they're going to seed Baron control if they do that. INTZ is completely ahead of the game, playing crisp macro right here. They know exactly what the next move is going to be. Get vision control in this jungle and start forcing Baron. Yeah, 100%, and it's not even necessarily the Baron. It's this. It's the picks that they're going to be able to set up. Mouse one more time. Oh. <laughs> oh, Lee Syndrome doesn't follow the queue this time around. But one more time, discipline play out of INTZ. This is what they're known for, slow playing it, controlling vision, making sure they're setting, sure they're setting up correctly. And EDG, if there's a criticism of the LPL region as a whole, it is their macro play. And maybe they do get impatient, try and face check this and not get vision back. Well, for EDG, that would be disastrous. Uh, Yang gets jumped on, taking a good itemization. A couple of big spikes being picked up. Macau has had that eye edge for a while. Rylai's getting closer, I believe, there for Tokers. He's got himself that needlessly large rod, Giant's belt. Two items spike for Deft as well as QSS. That is very important. Blue build Ezreal only comes online, really, two, three items. And this is where Deft is going to have to play magnificently to make yeah. up for the 6k deficits. Yeah, roughly 20 to 21 minutes is when he's going to turn on, especially if he gets the Muramana transform in that. But what is that actually going to do with the 6,000 gold difference, especially if INTZ continue to rotate the way they have been? Ash doesn't do as much damage late game as she did on the 6-15 patch. Syndra is a pick focus champion who does fall off a little bit in team fights if you can get on top of her. So these are the things that EDG is going to try and rely on. But the goal lead is so big right now. And you have to see how EDG is currently farming. They're giving mouse priority on the side wave. And the Vladimir and Ezreal are actually sharing mid lane farm. So we keep saying, you know, once they get the items, they will be able to come online. But that is going to be so delayed, just given how they're currently playing the map. Yeah, as far as EDG actually being able to stall this game out, I do like their choice of giving farm to Mouse. Because he can't just instantly die against Yang, otherwise they're going to be easily pulled around the map. A five-man unit on INTZ could quickly take the Baron, 
and that's going to get the wheels in motion for INTZ to close this game out. So they have to do that, and that then puts EDG in another bind because they either want Def to carry the game on Ezreal or they want Pawn to actually be able to go into a team fight, pool, and then Zonia's later. But that's going to require him to have three items. So it is really all about stalling the game as long as possible, and that puts the onus on INTZ to get the vision control and accelerate this game with the way their gold lead merits it. Take a look at all the pink wards in the inventory of INTZ. I feel like every time they've pushed up the map, they have extended that vision. So thus far, in the 22 minutes of the game, they've played that vision well. Next objective, you have to feel likely Baron. At the very least, pull EDG towards you or just secure the buff. Either are ways to victory here for the CB LOL region. And taking a look at uh, where the champions are grouped up, it definitely seems to be the case. Certainly is, and I mean, with the Braum, with the Lee Sin, you can even just start the buff if they come to you. You can go for that engage, make sure that you punish the lack of vision that currently EDG is fighting for. Wow. And wow, that is Mouse being absolutely dominated in the top lane. Yeah, over 2,000 gold, and I think this just speaks to the game plan that INTC had, and maybe even the lack of game plan that EDG had in this game. They picked for their bottom lane, they didn't get ganks for them, and then they just left Mouse out to dry over and over again, and that advantage is just spread across the entire map. Oh, tension's building here. Red buff was picked up by Death. A lot of damage caught onto Revolta. Tidal Wave comes up. Flash away I'm from Dr. This is Flash what for Pawn. Hemo Plague in the back. Teleport's coming down, but Clear Love's alive. Pawn should be able to run Ow. this one down. Yang's not joined the fight just yet. Mikhail's in trouble. All of a sudden, EDG punish INTZ. And they find two kills. Yang is Yang's behind a enemy lines. Meganar is out now, so he's a little mini Nar. Oh, he's going to get away. away. From that brush. Mm. EDG needs to have more fights like that where they're pouncing on the opportunity. That was a bit of sloppiness of INTZ going in there because Yang was not ready with the teleport in time. Yeah, exactly right. They wanted to contest the red buff. They wanted to get it off Deft, but he shows just how good he is on the Ezreal. Able to get all the poke damage down, chip them away. Finally, Pawn does pull the trigger. It's one of the reasons I do like him, as now Revolta and Yang looking for Deft. Oh, Deft has got a lot of damage to play with Revolta. Oh, is it onto Maiko, looks for Deft, kicks Deft backwards, and Yang gets the red buff, turns his attention to Maiko. Maiko's on 200 HP, Wallop, oh, no! Yang gets a goal, sends one into EDG, and Baron might be the target. Yeah, 100%, all of a sudden, the duo lane out of EDG is dead, and it's still 20 second death time, as this should be a free Baron set up for the CB LOL squad. I don't know how this is happening, Spawn. Like, yes, EDG is making misplays, and they seem like they had a lack of game plan, but the level in which Ince is showing up in this game is insane. Now it's all about zoning Clear Love off this. They get the stun. Yang, he's gonna try and zone him off Baron completely. He's Taking gonna want me Mouse, to. Mouse what is already doing? down. He's away from the team. Yang's looking for Pawn. Yang's got Megan off shortly, but Baron is picked up. A Baron and three kills right now for INTZ. Unanswered. And you can see Clear Love heads into his jungle. This is just fantastic play. This was gorgeous. He respected Deft enough to know he was going to be able to dodge the Q, lands it onto Mako, that lines up the kick on a Deft and lets Yang pick up the kill. And then this move from Yang is just awesome. He knows he's going to hit Mega. Flash, Nar gets the extra damage against the turret to secure the kill. Gorgeous. Yang is a monster. And we knew. Spot, why did you tell me more about this guy? <laughs> I said Yang was great. I said if there is a side of the map for INTZ that will win, it is the top lane jungle duo. They are very feared. And the thing is, that side of the map became every side of the map because Yang and Revolta double team top and bottom and they're in mid to earn a 8,000 gold lead, two dragons, a Baron, five towers to one. It's looking like this is INTZ's game to lose. Yeah, specifically just getting ourselves back into the, this game because we're so shocked that it's actually happening. How does INTZ close out this game? Well, they have Baron. Pawn is split pushing without a teleport right now. So INTZ is just going to run it right up the gut and get as much as possible. It's nothing that uh, Pawn can do right now. EDG hold off in the mid lane. A ring of pink wards from middle to bottom. We'll give INTZ some information to work with, but now they're going to break open the base. They will lose their second tower to minions. So There's a very, very small victory for EDG in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, EDG are just trying to get control of a minion wave this game so they don't get split pushed to death. But the Syndra's marching up in with three walls. Oh, good damage. 
fallen though. Gets healed up by Mako. He's going to be able to transfuse off those minions. Baron buff going to help out a lot as they're chipping away the tower. I do think you see a little bit of danger right here. Talkers did land that stun on the pawn who's got a spirit visage already. And pawn's already back at full health. Not to mention, Macau is without his flash right now. So if EDG were to get a good initiation somehow, I think they can still do work. But it's looking more and more likely like INTZ is just chipping down these base turrets. That's the thing, they've always been a team. Slow and steady wins the race. They're just gonna continue to try and play with it. Engage! They go! Pawns They're on to him! Macau. Macau's in trouble! Glacial Fisher comes down, but Macau is popped! Pawn survives the unleashed power, and the duo for INTZ are down. Yang's left alone. A little bit of support from Revolta. Oh. Look at the bowling ball pin! His mouse is kicked away. Revolta saves Yang, but that's the Baron buff thwarted. It seems at this point like INTZ need to stay around Yang unless they're able to protect their flanks from the Vladimir. Despite the massive gold advantage, when Pawn can get the flank, Talkers and Macau do not have answers for this. And INTZ actually gambled to try and get the turret, which means that EDG's push down mid lane will continue. They sent two back, but with a three-man squad, looking to take two instead of one. Well, Talkers is going to get to that mid lane shortly. Throws out some of those spheres. That at least saves the inner turret. Yang gonna run into a 1v2. He's in trouble now. Flash and GA is available. Meganar comes up. Good stun. Yang wants to turn it around. Ooh. He does it. Now he's looking for pawn. Remember, Yang can come back. GA is up. It's now a 1v2. Surely he can't <laughs> do this one. Jockster's running from the river. 1v4. And Yang gets shut down. And they give it over to death. I mean, yep. this really is becoming death's game to carry. Going towards what will be a last whisper now, and the Ezreal very much online. It's all about Deft and Pawn here. When Pawn gets his summoner spells up, he can 2v1 Talkers in Macau. EDG does not go down easy. You do not go undefeated in your region if you fall over after a few gold deficits. This game still needs to be closed out cleanly by I and Z because it is teetering on the brink of swinging back towards EDG. Revolta and Yang, they didn't pull the trigger there. This is a replay of both. Of course, exactly how EDG jumped on INTZ. And they actually saw him coming. He just had popped the ghost so early that he was on the back line because they could really stop him. And you can see that against the Syndra, he just takes no damage. Yeah, and Yang and Revolta were late to the fight. These are the guys that need to be the frontline tank peeling or engaging on the back line. Yang is far enough ahead and Revolta is tanky enough that if Pawn does go in, those two can completely stunt the EDG back line from joining the fight. But if they're off in a side lane playing their own game, that's going to happen again and again. Well, 30 minutes in, INTZ cannot afford to have those plays happen again and again, chat. Yes, they've still got a phenomenal lead, um, 7,000. Every single metric is in their favor. And INTZ, itemization can even just scale. Let's take a look at that. GA was popped, though, for Yang, so that's important to note for those next fights. Yeah, I will say, though, the last nine minutes, this gold lead has been completely stagnant. So the percentage gold difference is getting smaller and smaller for EDG and the carries are getting gold. So Pawn and Def may have been able to regain control of this game a little bit. Clear Love is still building up a lot of damage on Graves that drastically outscales the Lee Sin in the late game. So do not count EDG out of this yet, and INTZ has stumbled a little bit in the last nine minutes and are now in a little bit of danger. Oh, Ash Arrow, oh, so close! Not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, Pawn able to survive. A little bit risky, a little bit opportunistic, and a little bit worrying for INTZ. There were three members heading into that top lane. That was a free kill if they were able to land it, or even just stop the recall. However, Horn does not flinch as the Ash Arrow sails past him. The rest of EDG was actually on the bottom side of the map trying to secure that blue buff. They've given it to death. Now, I just want to go back to this. Every single resource that is possible is now being handed over to the Ezreal. Yeah, it's abandoning Mouse. Their strategy, if Mouse gets left in a lane with Yang, is to immediately engage for a 4v4. It works. They can speed up the Vlad with the Nami a little bit. He also has Ghost and Flash back off of cooldown. And INTZ need to proceed with extreme caution. I think if they do win a fight, since we're 30 minutes into the game, they can still close it in for victory. And I didn't think I'd be saying this 30 minutes ago, but really both teams are one team fight away from being able to take this game. Taking a look at some of the vision on the bottom half of the map, INTZ Around Ocean Drake in 30 seconds, Baron in 36. Vision favors INTZ, and you can see them trying to set up the sort of death push. Maybe not the straight up team fight that could secure the victory, but a pick into an objective is another option. And I think that's what they need to go back to. Whilst they've been fighting in lanes, it hasn't gone their way. Pawn's been able to get a couple of flanks. However, you can still see the vision that INTZ has been able to set up around an objective. 
You would expect EDG to once again see control of the Ocean Jet Dragon. That'll give three over. A pretty powerful Elder Drake will come out of INTZ at some point in this game, you would expect. The respawn timers are getting a little dicey. You can see that INTZ is already sending two of their strongest players in Yang and Revolta up towards Baron to do that. I think it was well executed Ocean Drake right there. That means they'll have three elemental drakes by the time the Elder comes up. EDG also traded that for vision control in the Baron area, so still plenty to see. See how well INTZ can bounce back. They've got a couple of pinks in the inventory. Execution is calling for Mikau as well. It's going to do wonders against Pawn and Mouse. Once again, to those extended fights. But as it stands, again, that percentage gold lead growing smaller and smaller. EDG getting tankier, getting more damage. The advantages of the early game are becoming less relevant because the entire landscape of the match has changed. And whilst EDG has fallen very far behind in this game, the ability to sweep out vision in their jungle around the Baron means that it is going to be hard for a flank to come out of Yank. That is a last ward standing, really, that they can look to teleport to. And it is quite some distance away from the Baron pit. So INTZ need to, one more time, march up their pink vision, kick EDG back out of that jungle. But as the carries get more items, it does become more difficult. I think it's actually extremely difficult at this point for INTZ to get the right fight onto EDG. You have a QSS onto Deft, and it's very difficult to get the appropriate amount of damage onto Pawn to prevent him from actually entering the fight. Not to mention Clear Love's 178 CS, which is powering up. So this is not even counting Mouse, who is mostly a non-factor in this game. Just the Ezreal, Vladimir, and Graves are a handful for INTZ's team comp to deal with in these later game fights. The importance of finding that pick one way or another, or forcing that Baron. Yang's got GA back up on the front line. Tanky stats with the Dead Man's Plate as well, and you can see just how important this vision is. INTZ battling for every single inch of the ring. That's exactly it. They need to be able to get either a Lee Sin kick backwards or a Talker's Stun from Fog of War to start one of these fights on a front foot, because if they keep getting engaged on, then the gold lead will stagnate farther. However, they have done a good job of, you know, inching that pink ward vision up. EDG still wrestling for control here. However, INTZ have got firm control over that river area. And now Revolta can maybe look for that kick that we keep talking about. But EDG just playing this so patiently. Take a look at this. Arrow comes they out. Clear connects onto Clear Love. Tidal wave is cancelled by Jockster. Revolta finds the sonic wave. Deft is alone. Clear Love's down. 5v4. Spawn's looking for Tokas. Tokas running for his life. Tangle pool was used. Good knock. Mouse is out. There's no more damage to follow up. Port's running for his life. They've traded one for three. But Tokas gets the shutdown and they turn for Baron. That is almost exactly what INTZ needed to do. The Ash Arrow was true. They heavily focused on a clear love. And then when Pod tried to enter the back line, the entire team came to peel. It's a three for one and most likely the Baron. And flashing in a straight line is such a sin. And clear love wasn't able to dodge out of that arrow with everything available. INTZ now at 35 minutes in this game looking very strong. For a team known for their macro, we saw the stats earlier. 22 wins and three losses with Baron. That's another one to the INTZ record, all from this play. He dashes directly into the line of the Ash Arrow. Doesn't even flash until later. Revolta, fo Revolta follows with a kick flash. Talk results. And you think a lot of cooldowns are down. Maybe EDG can still get this one. Yang gets Meganar at just the right time. They kill Mouse quite easily. Deft is zoned out of the fight because even though he's gone and they've tried to funnel all of his resources in, he's still not able to take down that super tanky Gnar that's sitting in front of him. We jump out of the replay and inhibitor turret in the bottom lane has been taken down. Thank you, Observers, for highlighting that one. The gold lead has now grown. And another Baron, a blue buff steal. Elders coming up in about two and a bit minutes' time. INTZ have got even more options to play with when it looks when they look to finish the game. And you just have to go back to how EDG set up this game, leaving Mouse out to dry. That did not work. Trying to get 2v2 advantages, maybe disrespecting Macau and Joxter a little bit too much. Revolta shows up. And even their item builds. I mean, Mouse is going for a Yomu's Ghost Blade. <laughs> He's 50 CS down and has seven deaths. There's just no way that he lives long enough in a team fight right now. I don't know why he isn't just going full tank. The third item should most likely just be a Guardian Angel because he needs to just occupy time. He needs background. to have some threat. I mean, if you can get onto the Syndra, get maybe one or two stuns down in a team fight. Right now as a 1-7 Aurelia, hey, you've done your job. Maybe Deft can clean it up, but... 
it's just not happening. Yeah, first impressions go a long way, and obviously there's five more games in the group stage for these guys, and really anything is still yet to happen. But the first impression for Mouse is very negative. And the first impression for INTZ is phenomenal. Two years ago, Brazil took down the number one European LCS seed at Worlds. Last year, Brazil took down the number one seed from North America at Worlds. And we may be a few minutes away from Brazil taking down the number one LPL seeds. Don't forget about the game they won against the Flash Wolves as well over there. So they've been able to have a few great international performances, but 10,000 gold up with Baron. Can they close? Well, inhibitor turret's going to Counts fall. pretty low. No contest yet. Unbreakable was thrown up by Joxta and INTZ. They get away. The base is open but the inhibitors still stand, and that is what truly matters when it comes to closing this game out. And EDG just need more time, and INTZ, they are slow playing this and giving it to them. They have been very methodical in their victory so far, but if you don't put the final nail in that coffin, if you allow the Vladimir to get to six items, he's only one away. If you allow the Ezreal to get there as well, there is still that fool's hope that EDG win this game. Exactly, the tension builds in this game. 18 minutes in, it was a six to 7,000 gold beat. 20 minutes later, it's only extended by 4,000. But eight turrets, Elder Drake up, Baron currently being worn, three elemental drakes. They keep accumulating their advantages, but the longer the game goes, the higher the variance becomes and the higher the chance that something could go wrong. So a lot of tension in this game, despite how controlled INTZ is trying to play it. For the first time, EDG were moving towards an objective around the Dragon, but they wisely back away. No vision, no information, and INTZ grabbed themselves an Elder Drake. That in a Whoa! <laughs> I held my breath. I held my breath for that one. Joker's got, uh, Joxter's got great hands, able to catch Ooh. another Ezreal ultimate. I mean, now this is a 90 second window where EDG just can't approach. This should be two inhibitors falling down realistically. We'll see if they do go for the Miracle team fight. Yeah, when you're playing against a team that has the Elder Drake, they do not get any tankier, but they do a bunch more damage. So the only way in which EDG could win a fight is if Pawn and Death immediately eliminate Talkers and Macau from this. Otherwise, the true damage burn as well as the gold lead would end the game. The damage so important for Macau's Ash. Uh, rapid fire cannon. It's a lot of poke. As well as that hurricane and eye edge. Winter's bite comes up from Jockstar, unable to tag anybody. So without the slow, without the CC, no inhibitor pressure yet. Yeah, Deft was actually able to tag Talkers with a mystic shot, and that alone actually delays the push fairly substantially. They're going to wait at least for the next wave. Looks to be the case. Minion wave uh, slowed down in the mid lane, although that will be a fairly sizable minion wave, about two, maybe a little over two waves pushing up, and so Eganar. INTs are going to be able to move over, Flash is available for Yang, needs to find a target, 50% of that Narbar is starting to wear down, Inhibitor drops without a fight, take a look at the damage on the bottom, INTZ secure the objective without really even needing to poke out EDG. But one more time, great play, they take the Inhibitor for free because the Mega Transform was there, now they're going to move into the mid lane, see if they can do the same, if they can get double Inhibitors, that is definitely an Elder Drake worth while used, but they're gonna back away. They have 35 seconds left on their Elder Drake. That's gonna time perfectly with the next minion wave. They will have a small amount of Elder Drake left for this next push. Also, the cooldown on the Meganar is starting to come back. He's gonna be able to start charging up that Narbar, but Pawn is trying to flank. If EDG is to come back in the game, it would need to be on a flank here. Look at that mini map. INTZ are on a timer. The top lane is pushing heavily towards them, and away. Pawn is also looking to find the flank. INTZ back away. They've got supers at least in one lane. Yang fancies a chance and Horn gets a lot of damage as the red buff is stolen the way out. And maybe INTZ is showing a little bit too much respect to a team that they've already said they look up to because that looked like a free inhibitor. Sure, Pawn was on the back line. However, you still had Elder. You still have GA on two of your members. You can split up that fight quite nicely, but they back away one more time, and now we're getting towards 70,000 gold, and that's where it really just doesn't matter anymore. It's getting closer and closer to that. Talker's already sitting at max items. Macau has the Executioner's Call, and he's gonna have to turn that into a Last Whisper variant. He'll be done. We have Deft and Pawn approaching six items. I mean, at least at this point, there is full builds on INTZ and nearly full builds on EDG. So at least for the next roughly 10,000 gold, they're still going to have the advantage. But if this gets to 90,000 to 80,000, that's when it's not going to matter anymore, and EDG will effectively be caught up. Oh, Look at this. Oh, flash forward. Yeah. Just so easy. Player of the game right now, Yang, set up by Revolta, but he's carrying it home. 
Yang has just solo killed the best jungler in the world at 41 minutes in. But also, you have to wonder what the best jungler in the world is doing there. That's why there was quotation marks. He's pushing the inhibitor there. He's trying to keep the minion wave at bay, but they do not have vision. EDG is out of sorts. Death got stunned. Oh, Last Euro finds they him. Got him. Death is down. Revolta's looking for more. Doesn't use the dragon blade. Does this time round. Death gets caught. Unleashed power onto Mako. INTC, they may have done it. They've got a four on two, and they're looking at the Nexus. 19 kills to 12, 42 minutes. It seems like it was stretching out, but this is going to be it. San Francisco is going crazy. Brazil scored the biggest goal of the tournament so far. They're taking down the LPL, and Brazil has done it. Their first game in the groups.